You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Joined us, we got 58 people dead. The number keeps climbing as folks succumb to their injuries. Unfortunately, pray for the victims, pray for the dead, pray for their families, pray for America, pray for the world, because we're entering that great time of global crisis. North Korea just had a ship seized with massive high-tech weapons, trying to sneak them into the Middle East. Uh, Trump sending another aircraft carrier. Our Pentagon sources are. They're strongly looking at hitting North Korea very, very soon. Islamic State has taken responsibility as of about two hours ago for the terror attack that is the largest gun attack on a civilian crowd in U.S. history. Witnesses, multiple witnesses are reporting that they were told to get out. They were soon going to be killed that night. I played a clip earlier from the Friday show covering a Paul Joseph Watson article who's joining us here in about three minutes uh, where Paul chronicled Local news, police reports, communist announcements, Antifa announcements, Democratic Party announcements, and videos uh, that Steven Crowder undercover folks got. We, of course, a month before had, uh, just showing all the multiple sources, uh, Doug Hagman, who we should probably get on later today, or uh, during War Room at least, if he can't come on now, with his undercover sources saying they're meeting, they're preparing gun attacks, bomb attacks, attacks on crowds, of stabbings uh, of conservative groups. This is so important. And Matt Bracken said six months ago he would uh, imagine the leftists would attack a football game because the NFL scene is leftist now during a future NFL crisis. I remember six months ago, we got to find the club. He said, I imagine when the next football season comes up in the, in the late uh, summer, early fall, somebody would then arc in, even outside the stadium, arc in a couple thousand rounds killing and wounding a bunch of people and then claiming it's a right winger with right winger info wars type literature left the scene and we war gamed that this morning we think that's probably the next big scenario but we've talked about rock venues country venues churches uh for whites being targeted or christians being targeted you saw the sudanese immigrant invader uh attack last weekend and shoot nine people killing one the media celebrated that. We've seen Islamic attacks in Canada, Islamic attacks uh, in France. And the prime minister responded by saying, quote, end white supremacy, close quote. That story's on newswars.com. You cannot make up the magnitude of this. But finishing up the last minute uh, of the clip from the Friday show, we're re-uploading in full hour of that first uh, broadcast uh, last week so that people can actually see it and hear it for themselves where I lay it all out, the 100-year anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution and the left saying they're coming to pick a fight. Well, you attack a rock concert or you attack a country music concert and you're a leftist and ISIS takes responsibility, I think they've done just that. But we'll war game every angle of this. Hillary is now blaming the Second Amendment. Here's the rest of my prediction last Friday. Attorney General, who's completely surrounded, I know, doesn't move on these forces. You need to understand the Antifa idiots are just going to be the cover for the squads and some of the other specialized groups that they're going to be using to decapitate and they think intimidate and confuse patriot government. But you better believe they're going to try to kill conservative Supreme Court justices. You better believe they're going to try to kill Judge Roy Moore, people like that. I mean, it's, it's folks need to know they're coming for you. They're coming for you October is only a few days away. They're saying their operation launches November 4th. That's probably a diversion. I think the attack's coming in the middle of October. That's just looking at all the pieces. I'd say look for middle of October, but first look for a new Charlottesville much bigger or a group of Charlottesville. That's going to be the cover for the detonation. <laughs> See the full hour, Rob Dew's uploading it uh, from last Friday's show to Infowars.com and Newswars.com right now. Now, Paul Watson joins us from London here in just a moment for the rest of the hour. But first, I wanted to 
get to this report of Matt Bracken, former Navy SEAL, counterterrorism expert, highly recommended by some of my Pentagon sources that are pretty high up as a real smart brain. He was on really marveling yesterday that the attack hadn't happened yesterday. Well, it did come hours after he was on. So here's Matt Bracken last night on the Sunday show. I mean, Matt, this is everything you've been warning about for a couple of years, but you said as Antifa politically loses, they'd get violent. Now they're, but they're just, I think, the cover for more serious teams and more serious operations. I see preparation for revolution against America by Islamic and communist forces everywhere. It's crawling out of the woodwork here in Austin. Yeah, it's true. It's true, but we're still in a in the battle shaping phase where th there's going to be a civil war. I mean, there's no there's no avoiding that. The train is coming down the track, and the bridge is out. But the question now for the uh, the left side is shaping the perceptions of who started it. Once this thing kicks off and it's you know just total kinetic mayhem, uh, then pretty soon it'll just be well, we're in a civil war. No more free assembly, no more street demonstrations. That'll be banned. Any groups of more than five getting out, on the, it, that'll just be banned. It'll be outlawed. But who throws the first blow is critical to shaping the opening stages of the Civil War. So what the left is trying to do is shape a, a either a false flag provocation, which I still think is most likely, probably somebody firing into a left-wing crowd, leaving uh, right-wing literature at the scene, Either that or another Charlottesville type, uh, you know, mentally uh, psychotic loser who will be you know, turned into a, a guided missile behind the wheel of a truck also to plow into. You, well, know, you said a, that about three months ago. You said shooting into a crowd or running them over, copying the Islamic attack. And it'll probably be staged and they'll use that as the red shirt. Uh, but, but Trump came out and said, hey, both sides are wrong. And that ended up basically defeating their narrative because it came out then Pelosi was forced to admit they were bad. But I see them kind of already flushing Antifa ahead of the next big event so they don't get the blame. And now the left's going to use Islamists as cutouts or at least say they were Islamists so they then don't get the blame but they're going to use that to come to power. Paul Watson has written an article where the left in mass is celebrating the attacks just like they celebrated uh, Texas being flooded saying it was all white supremacists from Charlie Hebdo to CNN. So Paul, we're going to break in a few minutes but uh, what is your first approximation on this massacre? Well, that it's absolutely horrific. I mean, the video coming out of it last night was absolutely chilling, Alex. Uh, the other thing is obviously this ISIS claim of responsibility, which there's this whole thing going around the internet, and we don't again we don't know anything yet. We we don't have much information at this point, but people is not at least loosely linked. That's the Associated Press, not me, not Alex Jones. So a lot of people are out saying this has that got absolutely no credibility. Well, it is from their official propaganda agency. The Associated aren't at least linked to them in some way. We had the Edmonton attack yesterday where it was a Somali migrant ISIS supporter who literally had an ISIS flag in his vehicle ramming into police and pedestrians. ISIS did not claim responsibility for that. If they had claimed responsibility, everyone would have believed them, but now they're claiming responsibility for this. And nobody believes them, or at least most prominent people don't believe them, because they say, oh, they claim responsibility for everything. Well, Not also, true. the brother, in an interview with Reuters, said his, his brother didn't own guns, but other media is just saying he did. Well, they're saying that he had a hunting license, but there wasn't that many guns in his home, given the area that it's a big gun, gun ownership area. And his family said that he wasn't a gun nut or he wasn't heavily into owning guns. So it doesn't really line Have we up. We found his political persuasion. Some are saying he was a leftist, but then we can't track the trails. Well, we don't know. I mean, there's, there's so much disinformation floating around and there has been all day that a lot of it's been proven wrong. But we know the, the crowd that he fired on, like this, the whole narrative doesn't fit that he was some kind of right-wing white supremacist, okay? He's got a non-white girlfriend. He's firing into a crowd which is predominantly white people, their country music fans. Yeah, he was probably a Saturday Night Live viewer. We'll stay right there. We'll be right back. Morning, I called my Army Special Operations Command sources. I called some CIA sources. 
Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. So much is happening. I even cut off the intro liner. I'm Alex Jones. We're broadcasting worldwide. You may notice that for six months we've been telling our radio affiliates that we have a new clock coming out where we actually have a more airtime than before, but it's the most popular talk radio clock out there where the segments are 10 minutes long instead of 6 minutes long, 12 minutes long, and 18 minutes long. They're all just 10 minutes long. Uh, and even our stations are very happy about that. Again, Alex Jones, your host here. Biggest gun massacre in U.S. history. And I got an analysis memo by a high-level CIA individual. Let's leave it at that. Uh, simply questioning the attack. The attack is very, very strange. I'm going to wait to put this out until the next hour, and I think I'm just going to also post it to Infowars.com. Uh, but everybody I've talked to that's worked in the CIA or is working at the CIA believes this is basically leaning towards a left-wing false flag attack. Uh, and we're going to be looking at every uh, angle of this. They say, look at Operation Gladio in Italy, which is a CIA operation. And he said, so sadly, we have to consider the possibility this could be staged by the shadow government. And you think, well, logically, if it's hitting a group of patriots, then that would look bad on Obama and, and Hillary and the globalists. But that's not how this works. The media is all blaming the Second Amendment. And they also want to get right-wingers to go out and start attacking people or have the claim that there's going to be a revenge attack out of this. That's what I've been smelling. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson joining us from London, England. Uh, Paul, the reason... All the evidence points at the left is they're the ones saying October Revolution, November Revolution, as you wrote last week, the Drudge Link to. They're the ones saying it's about to happen. They're the ones saying go out and kill white people. White genocide's good. They're the ones that have Islamic attacks happening every day now in Europe, the U.S. and Canada. So you look at the season this is in and who was hit. And as you were saying before the break, this guy wasn't a white supremacist. He was, you know, his, his Filipino girlfriend and uh, reportedly was like a liberal and didn't have a bunch of guns. What do you think, Paul, as of right now? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the problem. Everyone wants to confirm their political biases as to who to blame, and it causes a lot of disinformation. Like, I'll give you an example. There's a video um, at an anti-Trump rally, and it's a guy dressed in pink with a pink NASA T-shirt, wearing actually wearing a pussy hat, as they did at the Women's March. And everyone on the Internet right now is claiming that this guy is the shooter. Now, in a different video clip, it looks a bit like him, but you can't tell because the picture's not high quality enough. That's the real shooter on the right, the guy on the left. The picture's not high quality enough. But there's another video in which a woman calls him Steve. Steve. So, I don't know, make your own mind up. To me, it doesn't look exactly like him. But, but let me say this, Paul, say. because the left always lies and puts out disinfo. We don't counter them that way, but a lot of the public's sick of it. So if they're going to make stuff up, well, then the patriots are going to start doing it too. Yeah, and there's been a lot of that today. You've seen originally the wrong person was being named, and in fact other websites report on that because it was, I think it was the former husband of the woman that they were searching for. He was a left winger, but he wasn't responsible for the shooting, but people jumped to conclusions and named him as the shooter because they wanted it to fit their narrative. Now that is as bad as someone like Hillary Clinton who literally came out and said that we should put politics aside in a tweet, and in the same tweet in the same sentence, blamed the NRA, and then went on a whole rant about how we need to ban silencers. Okay, you can watch videos on YouTube. This is probably a, a fully automatic gun responsible for this massacre, if not one that was modified to become fully auto. Now, I'm not a firearms expert, but there's a ton of videos on YouTube which show that those silencers, if you use them in a fully automatic weapon, literally will melt. But it has nothing to do with that, and yet she's hijacked it within hours to push that political agenda while in the same tweet saying put politics aside. Absolutely despicable behavior. And of course, they're the same ones who come out after every Islamic terror attack, Alex, which are more prevalent, especially in Europe now, and say, let's just carry on as normal. Oh, but when this happens, when it fits your agenda, they want laws passed within minutes. So there's no intellectual consistency whatsoever we don't know who's re responsible. You know, it could turn out to be it wasn't left wing, it wasn't right wing, it wasn't an Islamic terrorist. It was just a mindless act of evil. It does happen sometimes where you just get mentally deranged people who are hopped up on whatever SSRI drugs. You know, the Batman shooter, he claimed he was motivated by 
a movie. All right, let me stop you. Wanted to become the Joker. Let so me stop you. We've got political. we've got breaking breaking news uh, here, Paul Watson. Uh, that's absolutely critical, absolutely key. Uh, I have gotten this. And no cameras, please, guys. N no cameras. This is from a law enforcement source. And the information is the news is lying. FBI HRT did the hit on the guy. And they found anti information in the room and photos of the woman in the Middle East. So he did not kill himself. The FBI hostage rescue team killed him because he was firing on them. So he did not want to be taken alive. And uh, reportedly he did it. Uh, and it was uh, anti for crap everywhere. And other things I'm not supposed to mention. That is directly from the hostage rescue team, by the way, Paul. And I'm going to delete this information now. Keep going. Well, obviously, that's huge. That's huge if it turns out to be true. Yeah, hey, Paul, 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 this is from high-level CIA right here. Let's do it directly from, and this is from the hostage rescue team. You know I don't make sources up. Go ahead. No, all I'm saying is that I'm going on the information I have, and I don't know. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just saying this is big breaking news. This is huge. In fact, you go ahead and take over the next four minutes. Uh, you host. I'm going to run in here and get with the writers. Go. All right. Basically, we've had the biggest uh, mass U.S. shooting in history. Again, they say it's a fully automatic gun. Hillary Clinton's out within minutes on Twitter, politicizing it, exploiting it, the very thing that she accuses the right of doing on a routine basis. She tweeted out that we need to put politics aside, while in the very same sentence she complains or politicizes it by blaming the NRA, by blaming silences, which it's her political agenda to have banned. You go on YouTube, there are videos, there are firearms experts who have said the same thing. You put a silencer on the end of a fully automatic gun, it will melt. Nobody's going to do that. It's pointless. It has no connection to this attack. Yet Hillary Clinton immediately chose to make it about that. Of course, you've got the calls for gun bans in the immediate aftermath of this attack. As you see, in every attack, the Pulse nightclub massacre last year which was carried out by an Islamic terrorist who said he was doing it in the name of ISIS, whether they were directly behind the attack or not. The media ignored that. Once again, they made it all about gun control. So, of course, unless the weapon was purchased before 1986 as a fully automatic firearm, in the if it was a modified semi-automatic gun, it would be illegal anyway. So terrorists will find weapons, whatever the law is, because they don't abide by the law. We saw that in Paris, Dean, strict gun control area, Paris, the whole of Europe is, especially in the major capital, capital cities. Of course, they obtained semi-automatic weapons and massacred, what was it, over 200 people. We went to Molenbeek. We visited, reported from Molenbeek. You can get a semi-automatic weapon on the streets of Molenbeek if you have the right connections as an Islamic terrorist within hours for 500 euros. Belgium, complete gun control as far as I know, at least very, very strict. Certainly semi-automatic weapons are completely banned. So again, it makes no sense. We have terrorists stabbing people in France almost on a weekly basis now. We had another attack in Marseille yesterday, killed two women. They use knives. Do we ban knives? So again, the big speculation right now, as we delve deeper into this and as more information drips out and it is dripping out on a minute by minute basis, was ISIS involved at least uh, at a distance in this attack? The whole claim from prominent experts, from non-experts across Twitter is that ISIS claims responsibility for everything. People are making jokes about it. Not true. They don't claim responsibility for supremacy for an Islamic terror attack by a Somali immigrant. We love our Somalis. So it's absolutely insane. Now, whatever the evidence, Alex, they'll still use it to try and bolster their narrative. We love anyway. our Somalis. We love our Muslims, too. Oh, they're so good. Oh, they're so sweet. But on top of it, oh, and the whites saw evil kill them. I'm so liberal. There's video of him right after another Somali attack saying whites are the problem. This is a religion of these people. Exactly. These are the same people who, after every Islamic terror attack, they have dare you even link it to Islam. 
you know, you're saying all oh, Muslims are terrorists. Well, nobody's ever argued that, but that's what they say after every terror attack. Oh, we must just carry on as normal after this one. No, we need gun laws now. We need to ban all white people. That's what some on the left are tweeting out today. They'll use it to advance their virulent racism. Oh, but, it, you know, we love our Somalis. There was an attack in Tennessee last week, which would have been even worse than it was. It killed one person. Nobody's even talking about it. Nobody even knows about it. It was a Dylan Roof-style attack. But the culprit, again, was a black migrant. That's right, Paul. Incredible job as usual from London. I'll get uh, right back to the next hour and let you get back to your work.